Cisco ICE 2.3 Device Administration, TACAX Plus. Okay, so again, this is a vanilla deployment um, in regards to TACAX. The ICE server pretty much only has an IP address. Um, and here we're going to enable TACAX, very first thing that we're going to do. And it gives a little description. And now this is going to be the central policy enforcement mechanism for anything that connects to, or can be, anything that's connected to wired, wireless, or VPN, including uh, device administration in a highly available deployment. Here with one of the work centers, um, obviously focused on device administration, gives you a walkthrough of the uh, things that you need to do in order to get it configured. Um, and uh, here's some uh, you know typical settings that you could uh, tweak. But we're really gonna jump right into it and just get it configured. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a couple users and uh, groups. So the first thing we'll do is create two groups. One is uh, all devices, admins, and then the second one would be all devices help desk. And we're gonna use that as a uh, element to um, determine uh, what access we're gonna give an individual uh, when they authenticate and then obviously authorize the commands to run. So now we've got the groups created. We're gonna very quickly jump over and create the users and assign those users to those groups. We're gonna use local authentication in this case. So here we'll do the all device admin user uh, first, um, and then we'll, we'll go through and create the uh, help desk uh, user as well. We'll give it a login password and enable password. Um, and then we'll uh, select the group itself, right? Give it a first name, last name, etc. cetera. Um, you might wanna put in an email address uh, but we're just keeping it very uh, simple. Uh, the idea here is to show you how quick you can get, you know, a technology like Identity Services Engine up and running and, and functioning and providing value uh, very, very quickly, even with things like TACAX. And what I wanted to do and, and what I've done in, in, in many of the videos is, is that the... Um, the configuration is very focused on a specific requirement. So you might want to do X, whatever X looks like. Um, I, I try not to build off of a big, um, you know, a bunch of uh, pre-configuration elements that need to be there first before you can move forward. Now, some things need to be there like IP addressing, etc. But the idea is, is that um, I want to show you from start to finish, right? You want to do TACAX, this is ICE, there is no pre-configuration from a TACAX perspective. How do you get it up and running and how do you get a switch, for example, pointed to um, uh, ICE and then having people being able to log in and having uh, command level authorization. And, and that's what we do. So now we're going into policy elements. So now what we want to do is define a couple of elements like command sets, the TACAX uh, profiles. Um, so the first thing we're going to do from a command set perspective is create two, right? Just like the groups. Um, and we're going to create one for the all device admin and then we'll create one for the all device uh, help desk. Um, and in the admin one, it is privilege level 15 we are going to give um, full access. So there is gonna be no um, restriction whatsoever. And then the help desk pro, uh, command set will be restricted to a, a set of commands that we um, feel that, that that user requires in order for, for their, um, them to function in the role that they're in. Um, again, you could be uh, you know much more granular if you want to. Um, you could add a bunch more commands. It's, it's really dependent on what you want to do. Um, here, what we're going to do is uh, really there's going to be uh, four commands that the user's going to be allowed to use, and that's going to be exit, enable, um, show IP interface, and show IP route, and that's it. They're not going to be able to make any changes to the system itself, but they're going to be able to very quickly troubleshoot uh, certain elements within the, the uh, device that they're managing. And again, this offloads work from a senior level folks, right? And empowers junior level individuals uh, to be able to do certain tasks without the worry that uh, they might uh, do something a little more disruptive by accident or maybe because they feel that they have the capability to do so, right? Um, 
So we'll finish up here adding a couple of commands and then we'll just reorder them um, and then save that out. Once this is complete, we're gonna move over to the profile. And the profile is gonna set things like their um, default privilege, privilege level when they log in. Um, so for example, what we'll do is for the admin, the default will be 15 and the max level will be 15. Um, for um, the help desk, for example, uh, maybe we'll do something like, uh, you know, minimum privilege level of one and uh, privilege level uh, seven is the max. Um, here I'm just reordering and, and what, you, what you saw there was if you have two elements highlighted, obviously you can't move them um, both at the same time. Okay, so that's done. Let's quickly go over to do the uh, TACAX profile. Um, so what we've done already is we've enabled TACAX, right? That's the first thing. Um, we've created a two groups and we've created two users. We've created two TACAX command sets and now we're going to create two TACAX profiles. Um, and then once we're done this portion of it, then we're going to move into uh, building out the policy sets themselves. Um, and you can see we're six minutes in. Um, we're just finishing up in regards to what's required from a TACAX perspective um, so far on the Identity Services Engine platform. So 15, uh, level 15 and 15 here, so that's good. Uh, we'll do the help desk element as well. Um, and here we'll do default privilege of one and then the, uh, as mentioned, uh, maximum privilege of uh, seven. And so that looks good. So from here, right, now we've got all the core elements that are required. We'll now build out the policy set. And once the policy set's configured, um, we, we move into the configuration of the NAD network access device, right? Making sure TACAX is enabled, and and then we'll do some switch configuration. So here we're we're going to dictate that anything that is a device type of Cisco um, that it'll hit this policy set. Now I change this a little later, and I make note of it. Uh, I use uh, you know device type label of Cisco switch. Um, so I was I I be uh, I. I'm a little more granular in the uh, the policy set itself. So let's uh, modify the default authentication mechanism here, and we're going to just point to internal users um, as the um, store that we're going to use. So we got default got the, the rule name we could be a little more granular here as well if we wanted to um, we could add a different uh, additional conditions um, in this case I you know there's there's no need to for this example so now we have our authentication authentication policy complete now we're going to move to the authorization policies and this one now is where we're going to start using some of the elements that we created so the first thing we're going to do is use the all device admin. Uh, the condition here is going to be all device admin. And um, what we're going to do here is we're going to grab that all device admin privilege 15 command set and the profile that's obviously assigned to the all admin uh, group. So what we can do now is we can duplicate that rule and just do some modification of it. In this case, it might have been easier just to start from scratch, but I want to show you the duplication of it, right? Because now I got to go in and delete some of the elements. But as you get more complex policies, um, you, you or authorization policies, um, copying them certainly comes in handy, right? Because there's only a subset of the data that you need to manipulate. So now we assign the help desk element, so that's good. We'll save that out. And now we've got all of the core elements required for TACAX. Um, but now we got to move it towards uh, configuring the uh, network access device to make sure that the switch itself is um, uh, able to leverage is able to leverage um, ICE. 
So the first thing is, is we got to enter the device in, um, in, uh, in, in ident or sorry, yeah, and enter the device into Identity Services Engine. Um, but I've already added the device in the previous video. So this one is carried over a little bit, right? So I already have the rad radius portion. So really the, the, the difference would be you give it the IP, which I already did, right? And then you would check the TAC exit uh, box and you'd be done. The other piece now is, is now configuring the switch itself. So I've uh, here's a copy of the configuration I have applied. Um, so this is we're going to copy this and move it in. I'm not going to go through each one of these commands to tell you uh, each one and what they're doing. Um, certainly you can review it. You can use the the, the guide to have a quick look at it. Um, but this is going to give you a full working example of what we've done so far. Um, the other thing that I did not add here is we're doing command authorization and that was really the focus here. Um, I did not include the authentication portion. So if you want TACX, which you typically would want, you would also add login authentication in this call, in this case default because that's the default um, that we're using. Um, but uh, but you would certainly add that, and that way then you're not only getting all the authorization components, but also getting the login data as well is being authorized. So we're just logging in, right? So again, I've already applied that configuration that I showed you in the text file, um, and uh, I'm logging in just to see what what access um, that individual has. So the first thing to note here is, is that um, I did change that uh, device list to include um, that switch parameter, right? So very more, a little more specific. And I, I talked about that earlier in the video, but um, I made note there as well, as you saw in red. Okay, so let's log in here. We can start seeing things uh, from an authorization perspective start showing up. And now we've logged in and we can see we're privileged level 15. That's great. Okay, so now that's good. So I'm just, what I'm doing is capturing logs, but, um, and so we can talk a little bit about it f for a second. But um, the first thing is that, that, that all device admin worked as, as expected. Now the help desk, right? So now we're gonna enable seven. Okay, that worked, that's good. Uh, we'll do show privilege, command not authorized. So, because that wasn't one that we entered. Um, but let's do show interface, again, failure. Show IP interface, that one works, okay? And now if we do show IP route, that's gonna work as well. So you can see they can't run any additional commands um, because they're not authorized and we're, we're authorizing every single command. If we look at some of the um, logs themselves, right? So here's the report on the failure. It shows what failed right or, or why it failed and then what command was entered so there is no hiding it's all transparent it's all logged um, and um, even if they enter commands they're not authorized to do we can still see uh, what they're doing or attempting to do and, and maybe there's a conversation to be had anyways that's it